Hi guys and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, I am an ex-arachnophobic, now tarantula keeper. I use these animals as a way to break the fear of my arachnophobia. So if you're joining me today because you have a fear of spiders or fear of tarantulas and you would like to get over them, if you're thinking about getting into the hobby of tarantula keeping to overcome your fear of spiders and tarantulas, then please stay tuned for the next five videos I'll be putting out which is going to be a sort of breakdown of how I cured arachnophobia using some pretty well-known and useful techniques. I won't be bombarding you with pictures of tarantulas or spiders in this video, I just want to take this first video as a time to understand arachnophobia and different levels and how severe and traumatising it can be. Because as someone with a background of arachnophobia, I know it can be very detrimental to your day-to-day -day life. So starting a bit with my background of arachnophobia, from an early age I knew I was afraid of spiders and I always had people tormenting me with them and it, it made me very uncomfortable and obviously it never made the situation get any better. So one of the biggest moments in my life was when I went to a tarantula keeping expo in the UK and I got to hold a large Gramistola rosea or rosehair tarantula. Now this moment for me was just the point where a lot of the fear just lifted off of me. But to get to that point, it took a couple of years of me researching, watching videos of tarantulas, getting to know tarantulas, what they do for the wildlife, what they do for their ecosystems. So we're not going to be touching on any of that in this video because I think that's just one, one of those things that should happen towards the end of this almost like therapy. So how do you know if you're scared of spiders? If you was in a room with a spider in a glass cup, like a house spider, just a normal sized house spider, and you felt nauseous, sweaty, nervous, anxious, all of these feelings means you have some type of arachnophobia. There are different levels to this. There are some people who can't even be in a room with a spider, even if it is contained within a tub. So the different levels of arachnophobia could include not being able to be in the same room as a spider, it could be something as little as just feeling a little bit anxious knowing there is a spider in the room. Or it could be very serious as making people faint or, you know, feeling very ill. I mean, at one point my arachnophobia was so severe that I was, you know, it made me feel ill whenever I saw a spider or a tarantula. So, so the five part video series I want to make will include this first step, which is understanding arachnophobia. The second step, which would be exposure. The third step, which would be reflection. The fourth step being interaction. And the fifth step being maintaining the therapy. If you would like to see these videos, I will be uploading them once a month, uh, towards the end of the month normally. And if you would like to stay in touch and make sure you don't miss any of these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And turn on the notification bell so you don't miss one of these videos. So quick story about how I knew I was very severely arachnophobic was one time I was on holiday in Greece and I'd left my sh uh, I'd left my swimming trunks out to dry overnight on the balcony and in the morning I went out to fetch them put my hand into my shorts to turn them inside out and a humongous huntsman spider crawled up my arm now I'll, I was very young at the time and this had a devastating impact on my mental well-being for tarantulas and spiders so but what I took from this experience is that I survived the experience, even as stupid as that sounds. When I think back now, I survived the experience, I wasn't bitten, and nobody was injured at all. So when I look back and think about that, I think, well, it wasn't really that bad then. But at the time, it felt like such a devastating experience for me. Um, if you have family members, like my dad, for example, who tormented you from a young age with spiders and pretended to cut them and chuck them at you, and in some cases actually did chuck them at me. Thanks, Dad. This can be very traumatising for people that have arachnophobia. And these people don't understand that because they don't have the fear themselves. If you have people like this in your life and you really don't like the way they behave, then the best thing to do is just sit down and talk to them seriously about this. Because if you are serious about understanding and getting over your fear of arachnophobia, then you need the people around you to support you. Now I know a lot of arachnophobes in my life, and since I've started
keeping tarantulas. I have had people that would never dare go anywhere near a tarantula. They come into my tarantula room and they sit there and I get the tarantulas out in the tubs and put them on the table and these people will actually come into the room and sit and have a look at these tarantulas. I even know people who are afraid of snakes and have done the same thing with my ball python. So I believe this just isn't for arachnophobia. I believe these steps can be done with any animal. But I'm just going to be talking about arachnophobia because that is obviously my fear and this is how I overcame it. One thing I would like to touch on is if you are thinking about getting into the tarantula keeping hobby to overcome your fear of tarantulas or spiders, that I would like to say that this does not work for tarantulas and like normal house spiders separately. What I mean by that is your fear of tarantulas will probably go pretty quickly, but your fear of house spiders and normal true spiders will probably still remain for quite some time. I'm at the point now where I can handle tarantulas, I can catch house spiders and I can handle them. That still doesn't mean I want to find a house spider in my bed at night. So I don't believe this is arachnophobia, this is just the fact that I don't want some kind of animal crawling over me in the night, which I, complete, which I think is completely understandable. Now, after these videos, if you do find that you are still anxious around spiders or tarantulas or large spiders, then this is fine. It's not that you're scared of the spider, you're, it just means you are showing respect for the animal. I mean, there are times when I'm like feeding my tarantulas and uh, feeding, especially some of the larger tarantulas, I always have catch cups there available and sometimes it, my hands do get a bit shaky still. This doesn't mean I'm scared of the spider, it just means I'm being cautious and respecting the spider's space. I think a lot of people can mix these two things up of being afraid of something and respecting something and still being cautious about that. And again, if you, you know, bring the washing in one day from off the line and you unfold it and there is a spider in there and it makes you jump, that doesn't mean you are scared of spiders. That just means something has startled you. If someone jumps out from a corner of you, it doesn't mean you're scared of them. It just means they have startled you. My girlfriend is the prime example of this. I'm not scared of her at all, but every now and again, she will like to hide in the corner of one of the rooms at night and then wait for me to come upstairs and then jump out and almost give me a heart attack. So if you follow my guide on how to cure your arachnophobia, then I'm sure I can help you in some way. Because believe me, if I can overcome my fear of arachnophobia, then so can you. Because my fear was so, so traumatizing to my, my whole life, really. Uh, the reason I wanted to cure my arachnophobia is because, one, I was fascinated by tarantulas. I started watching tarantula videos about three, four years ago. And I was watching feeding videos and, you know, uh, keeping videos, husbandry videos. And, you know, there's so many different types of tarantulas out there and they all look beautiful. I've always been a wildlife lover. So <clears throat> I thought, well, if you love wildlife, then why don't you love all wildlife? And not just like, you know, the, the cool exotic pets like snakes and lizards and that. I mean, there are so many cool and wonderful tarantulas out there for you to discover. I mean, some of the true spiders as well. They have some of the most remarkable patterns and you know, web designs and it's just fascinating and I believe that being scared of these animals just isn't helpful to anyone. Now I'm in no means an expert in you know therapy or um, <clears throat> understanding psychology or anything like that but I have used these steps for myself. I've not had any external help from any professionals or anything like that. I took it upon myself to overcome this fear and I just thought I would share my progress with the world and hopefully help other people who are, you know, intimidated by spiders or tarantulas and don't want to pay for that professional help. So if you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And you never know, after you've cured your arachnophobia, you might want to stick around on my channel and see some of these awesome animals I've got in my collection. So now we understand a bit about arachnophobia and the different levels, the next video is going to be on exposure therapy. Now this is the big one. This is going to be, well, I'm not going to talk about it in this video. We'll wait to the next video because I don't want to bombard you with information. But the next video is going to be you know, the most important video in this series, I believe. So the things to take away from this video are the different levels of arachnophobia, i.e., you know, sweating, not being able to be in the room with a tarantula or spider, you know, physically feeling ill from being in a room with a spider or tarantula, not being able to sleep because you know there's a spider somewhere in your house. Uh, the next point would be 
understanding the difference between arachnophobia and just normal human reactions, i.e. being scared of something to a point where you can't even look at it, versus finding a spider somewhere where you don't expect it and it makes you jump, this is just startling you, you are not scared of the spider, it has just made you jump, which is a natural human reaction. The third point is everything can be worked on so you you know, get better with your fear and you can control it more. So stick around for the next video and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments down below on things that you believe I've missed in this video so you can help others read in the comments. And you know, if you just thought I was helpful or if you're looking forward to the next video, then please let me know down in the comments. I'm usually very responsive with YouTube comments, so I will be sure to get back to everyone. So yeah, let's do this together and let's break some fears and enjoy the wonderful world of spiders and tarantulas. Thank you. Goodbye.